Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back, uh, my dear students. I am hope everybody is fine. This is the 25th class for project management, and as you remember, in the 24th class at the FAC end, in the last two slides, I started discussing about project cycle and project life cycle and corresponding concepts. So, continuing with that, for the project life cycle, the stages under conceptualizations are: you basically have the concept. You have an idea based on which you want to start of the project. So, the idea can be either to build a house, either can be to come up with a new product in the market or to design a new pharmaceutical drug or it can be say for example, go for launching a spacecraft, maybe the, the, the task and the work of ISRO. So, on, under that concept basically it triggers an event in the sense someone comes up with an idea, it can be either an idea which has some social benefit, it has some either political ideas to be implemented, it can be either a business proposal, it can be trying to basically come up with a mega project on any field. So, you capture the concept and try to visualize it, what are the effects, what are the social implications what are basically the, the benefit for the organization and what are the project objectives based on that you, you conceptualize that. You clarify the concepts in terms of the project. So, with respect to the concepts which you have which you want to implement, whether those are act, actually practically feasible with respect to the project which you are going to undertake. So, consider that you want to open up a bank. Uh, a branch of a bank in one of the areas and your profit motive is not that important. Consider the public sector undertaking bank. There you have to see that how far the, the reach of the bank would be considering that people are open able to open the account, get the loan or people can facilitate, you can be the as the bank or the bank manager can be the facilitator to give all the financial services which should come to this set of people who are staying or residing in that region. And after that, once the consideration phase, then you have basically found out how your ideas can be uh, propagated or the project ideas can be propagated with respect to the practical things. Then you elaborate the con concept, concept in, its, in its field, how it can be implemented, what are the variables to be considered, what are the cost implications, what are the time implications, whether it is feasible or not, whether it is technically feasible, social implications, social impact and en environment impact. Then you evaluate the concept with respect to all the criteria and then basically decide and, and end the conceptualization stage. Stages under planning are the three broad headlines are design, plan and allocation. In the design, you have make the basic design of the project, whatever it is. If it is trying to build a new chassis of a car or trying to basically come up with a new dress material or come trying to come up with a new uh, concept of solar panel, whatever it is, make the de basic design both from, from, from uh, the aspect of its implementation stage to the technical stage to trying to buy the raw materials, whether they are feasible, whether you have the technical know-how. You develop a performance criteria according to which the project will be evaluated. So, you want to, if it is a one only project which is to be implemented, you will try to find out what is the overall cost and benefit. If you are trying to come up with a new product and there are competitors, you will try to find out how your product will do against the competitors, whether it will be able to capture the market, whether it is got some extra benefit for the customers such that they will buy the product, whether you are trying to give some extra warranty for that, what are the after sales services, all these things. If it is a new hospital, you will see whether the number of beds is quite high or whether if that whole area where you are trying to build up the hospital, 
it has got a propensity of say for example in West Bengal arsenic poisoning is a problem. So, if you are coming up with a hospital in that region and if you think that that hospital will cater mainly to this arsenic poisoning and has the facilities adequate facilities to that your main focus would be that. Or say for example, you want to set up a, of, um, a hospital in the region of Rajasthan where it is very hot, very dry. So, you have to have those basic amenities which will cater to the type of diseases which are very specific to that area. So, you will basically have the plans accordingly. Then you develop the targets of the milestone that means depending on what the project is, when it should be implemented, consider you want to build up a steel plant in Odisha. Odisha. So, your implementation projects are that uh, coal would be available from say for example, Jharkhand, iron ore would be available from those regions in, in Odisha, in Jharkhand and that region and you will be able to export um, some fine quality steel to the rest, rest of the part of the world considering there are very good facilities in the east coast. So, you will try to analyze what are the milestone when you should start the production and based on that you make the plan or say for example, you are a new service provider considering that uh, this demonetization has started and their internet banking or uh, cashless transaction are the new thing and you have come up with a new um, facility of payment which can be competitor to that SBI buddy or uh, Paytm and then you have a deadline that say for example, my February 2017 I have to implement that and what are the milestones based on which I should do it. So, you basically make it plan accordingly and do, do the work. You plan the development and how one would how one would proceed with the project. So, try to basically plan it in such a way that your goal is met within the deadline within the cost and if there are any cost overruns how we will manage that in order to meet the, uh, the overall goal for the project. You concretize the evaluation criteria, evaluation criteria may be cost, may be return to investment, may be the interest rate based on which you are trying to charge the customers, so whether it is high or low and whether it can be compared with respect to all the competitors who are there in the market. So, when the, after the design and the plan state, when you come to the allocation stage, you develop a plan for allocation of the resources, both manpower, material, machine, resources, financial also resources also. You plan the allocation in detail for each activity or subgroup of activities or on a micro level and then you concretize the evaluation criteria for the allocations in such a way. So, each and every task has an evaluation criteria based on which you can find out the overall criteria for the project. Stages on the, uh, under the execution one, once the conceptualization and the, the general next stage is over, you have the control phase where you where there is a modification of the tar trans target and the milestones, allocation of modifications are taken into care. Say for example, you suddenly find the price of one of the raw materials increases suddenly. So, you will try to basically replenish or replace that with other raw materials. Consider copper prices as the increase. So, you would basically try to plan your over or, or product design. Consider it is a motor in such a way that you may be able to buy some other material to replace copper. Okay, say for example, if that is possible. So, you will evaluation of the modification criteria or the, the, the goals based on which you want to re-evaluate whole strategy would be done accordingly and there would be a control phase based on which you, you will again evaluate your man, material, resources, financial um, uh, implications which are there for trying to allocate or reallocate these resources would be considered again. Stages under terminations are once the project is, is in under progress and it is to be wrapped up, there would be deliverable stages evaluate, then you will review your, your deliverables, how good or bad your project implementation stage was, then you will basically support it. So, under the deliverable would be basic deliverable conditions would be analyzed, whether it has been met, 
what was the project for if was it for on social benefit purpose you will try to analyze yes it was and what are the implementable goals based on each you will try to analyze your so social benefits deliverable modifications if required and necessary so consider that water or rain was a problem in one district where you have trying to set up a desalination plant and suddenly due to some geological features changing consider a hypothetical case your um, adequacy of, of rain water becomes uh, now not a problem so obviously you will have to reevaluate your strategy based on which you will whether implement that project not implement the project or try to utilize the resources in such a way that you can at least go along with the project but it's overall deliverable and all the criteria based on which you evaluate your project have to be relooked into you will deliver the evaluation stage the evaluation controls would be calculated you will review the basic review process the review the development one review the evaluation one and then in the support one stage you will go sub stage under the stages and termination the basic maintenance and the liability perception would be analyzed development of the support criteria would be analyzed and the support evaluation would be done accordingly so that it meets the overall goal some methodologies which are done in order to analyze how good or bad your project is one is the strength weakness opportunity threat or the brain brain brainstorming session where different people come up with all the the feedback with with their experience about what are the strengths of the project what are the weaknesses opportunities threats and based on that you try to analyze how the project is going for this we analyze the characteristics of the project related to the four main evaluation criteria as stated above we may be interested in resource allocation and then concept on the resource leveling it may be possible that time is is a factor so he have to use some extra resources to so finish that work we may be interested in only resource allocation and not on resource leveling so resource resource allocation is done leveling means that you want to try to utilize the resources on an average even basis throughout the duration of the project but resource allocation may be turn out to be such that for the third and the fourth fourth project resources are not that important so you will try to divert the resources from the third and the fourth um, activity on to the first or the second where it is important so resource leveling may not be possible but resource allocation has to be done in order to basically see the criteria for the project is finished so if you remember i had discussed um in in quite some time back about the different type of financial concepts based on which you can evaluate a project so i'll basically go through the details for that and go it go slowly so that the candidates can understand or the people who are doing this course can understand what are the implications so let us go to the discounting factor concept so without going to the general details i'll just go through the table and i'm sure you will understand that so one may expand so this is that one this table which is given can be expanded for different interest rates for different time periods for months for weeks for uh, years whatever it is but i have taken this on a yearly basis so time is calculated at 0 1 2 3 4 and correspondingly values are given on the first column and the interest rate which are also in integers like 0% 1% 2% are on the topmost row so the formula which we use is basically is given by the concept which is we have been doing it and i did mention it a few times is that say for example i write down the basic formula and you will understand say for example i want to find out the value of the input or the investment at time t is equal to 0 considering that so what i do consider is let us consider this simple diagram this is where i not or i0 is so this i0 and this one i t is equal to 0 are the same thing at time t is equal to 0 consider this time difference is say for example t is equal to capital t so again capital t can be as i mentioned in years months weeks and consider this value is i capital t so at that point of time i i is cap t now i want to basically find out that what is the value of i suffix t 
based on the fact I am standing today which is time t is equal to 0 and trying to evaluate that. And also consider the interest rate between t is equal to small t is equal to 0 till cap small t is equal to capital T, the interest rate is fixed which is r. So, in that case what would actually be is this. So, this is t, it is like this, it is a concept is very simple. I have 10 rupees and I want to invest that 10 rupees into a bank where bank gives me interest rate which is the risk free interest rate of 20 percent. So, what will happen? I deposit say for example, on 1st of January 2017 10 rupees and within that year of 2017 I do not do anything, I do not neither input any extra money nor do I take out the money. So, the bank would be paying some interest, consider that interest rate is for the time being given by the concept of simple interest rate. So, there are concept of simple interest rate and then continuously compounding interest rate all these things are there. So, we will see that how they are calculated, but let us consider the concept of um, um, concept of simple interest rate. So, simple interest rate basically means that if I had coming back to the example, if I have input given an input of 10 rupees, 20 percent is the interest rate. Hence, after one year when I go to the bank and take out my money, there would be two components. One is the 10 rupees principal amount plus the interest rate based on the fact 20 percent is simple interest rate being used to calculate what is the interest rate on that 10 rupees. So, if I use that generally it would be two terms one is the principal amount and one is basically the, the interest rate. So, if I now go back take the other view round if I want to find out what is the actual amount of money at time t is equal to 0 given some amount i suffix capital T is after one year, then I have to basically divide by that con concept of interest rate in order to find out what is the value of I 0. So, this is the formula which I have in front of you and I will try to basically highlight that for your own convenience. So, this interest rate which you have which I am trying to mark this interest rate R can be simple interest again I am mentioning can be com uh, compounding interest can be continuous compounding. So, based on the fact the table is shown and this formula is exactly the same thing which is shown here exactly the same. So, here I is R. So, I have divided R by 100 in order to bring into the concept of um, ratio and this T is the time period which here is small t here is capital T considering is only one time period. So, this small t can change. Now, if you see the values inside the table, it means that at a 0 interest rate for a time period of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth, the total value of amount is as given in this second column where I am hovering my pen. Now, if I consider say for example, the last column, it means that for an interest of 10 percent, 10 percent is this i value which is 10 divided by 100. For a time period of 0 where capital small t is 0, the value which I will get is actually equal to 1 because if it is to the power 0, anything to the power 0 is 1. So, obviously, the value remains the same and the corresponding value which you find out is calculated accordingly. Say for example, it is 10 percent for a 10 year period, then obviously, it would mean in the denominator if you look at this formula it will be 1 plus 10 by 100 that is in percentage size con converted to decimal that in the bracket to the power 10 because 10 is the year. So, based on that when I calculate the value comes out to be 0 0.3855. So, discounting factor would be considered based on, on, the, on the fact that what is the interest rate, what is the methodology of trying to calculate the interest rate and what is the time period. Now, a question would immediately come into your mind is one, 
Is it always necessary to use simple interest rate? My answer is no. You can use any concept of interest rate based on which is given and what you think is practically feasible and what is practically actually useful. So, your con continuous compounding, compounding concepts are important in the practical sense and how many times they pay would also be important when you do the calculation. We will see that later on. Number two is that you obviously would ask the second question is that the interest rate which I am considering say for example, 10 percent and for a time period of 10 years. So, that is being kept fixed which means 10 percent is fixed for the first year, second year, third year till the 10th year. Is that feasible? My answer is no, that is not feasible, that is not actually practical also. So, say for example, your actual interest rate for year 1 to year 10 are different, consider r suffix 1, r suffix 2 till the last value which is r suffix 10. So, when you do the calculations that that interest rate which is fluctuating, the time which is also different for different interest rate should be taken into consideration to find out the discounting factor table based on which you do your calculation. So, this becomes very easy for you to understand. Once you look into the table, understand how the discounting factor table and values are calculated, considering that time frame is dip dip different for different interest rate and the concept of interest rate is also different for different projects which are to be considered. So, consider this rupees 1525, 1525, so which is shown in the, the this topmost table which is now I am highlighting in yellow color and the values which you have inside the tables are based on the fact that the time period again are 0 to 10 in, in units of 1, interest are 0 to 10 in units of 1 and the values which you have are based on the fact that if I only consider 587, so 587 means the value which is technically now which when calculated on an interest rate basis for 10 years at an interest rate of 10 percent that will basically give me a value of 1525. So, now consider the concept of net present value. So, before I consider the net present value, I, I thought I should highlight this, this uh, important fact about the interest rate and time. Interest rate I told you that it can be continuous compounding, simple interest rate or compounding interest rate and payable at different point of time. It can be with the payable quarterly, it can be paid monthly, it can be paid uh, weekly, whatever it is. But the base calculation would be based on the fact that the interest rate is, is calculated on a per annum basis. So, per annum paid quarterly would have a different implication than per annum paid uh, on a monthly basis or per annum uh, being uh, calculated on, um, on a um, uh, weekly basis would have a different concept than the per annum being paid on a yearly basis, point one. Point number two is that the, the time frame which is given as, as I mentioned when we were discussing the tables in the 303rd and then 302nd slide, I did mention that the time periods are calculated on one units on a yearly basis and that is the norm. The norm, why it is as a norm? Because if you remember your interest rates are being calculated on a per annum basis. Hence, the time frame based on which you are doing going to do the calculation is also on a time period basis which is year. But your question would be what if it is to be compounded on a weekly basis. So, what we will do is that we and if it is to be, to be done on a weekly basis, so we have technically 52 weeks in a year. So, the time frame now would become 1 by 52 considering that is being weekly compounded. But obviously, the per annum concept for the interest rate remains. So, the time frame even though it is given on yearly basis for any calculation is very simply straightforward that you find out the percentage on a year wise sense and do the calculations. Keeping in mind that the interest rate are again I am repeating it that uh, they are based on a per annum basis whatever the, the, the concept of payment whether quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily on a second basis, on a millisecond basis that does not matter. So, now net present value again coming back to the 304th slide, the net present value is that consider we have C suffix T, 
an R suffix t as the amount received and the interest rate at time t. So, it would be basically considering that uh, time is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 till t and these times are on a yearly basis and they can be either uh, on a monthly basis or a weekly basis that does not matter. And that interest rate as you as you would have noticed is also different for week 1, week 2, week 3 may be different from what is the interest rate on 48th week, 49th week, 50th week. Now, the net present value at if you see the suffix t is equal to 0 and obviously, it would mean that uh, I am trying to find out the time period on a base of 0, 1, 2, 4, 0 means as I am today. So, if I am standing on 1st of January 2017, the clock will start ticking for only from them and there the time frame t is equal to 0. And if I am doing on, on a daily basis, then the time period on 31st of December 2017 would be corresponding to the fact it is t is equal to small t is equal to 365. So, if I want to find out the value of, of net present value as of today, so it will be C0 is the value which is today, whether input or output that does not matter, it can be negative or positive, divided by 1 plus R0 is the interest rate for as of today. So, obviously, it would mean that for that time period that the time period is technically 0 that is t 0 hence 1 plus r suffix 0 to the power 0 is 1. So, it, it remains as c 0. When I go into the next time frame that c i is the c 1 is the value of amount of money which is input output. So, if I want to find out the net present value of that amount as of today it would be divided by 1 plus r suffix 1 in the bracket to the power 1 because that is the time period which is small t is equal to 1. Similarly, when I go to the last term, if you see it is C suffix capital T, which is the actual value of, of inflow and outflow happening at time t is equal to capital T and the interest rate at that point of time is R suffix capital T uh, and then we try to find out what, what is the time present value of that amount of money based on the fact I am trying to do my calculation as of today. So, this value which you see is the value of the amount of money which will come to my pocket or go out of my pocket at time t is equal to capital T based on that I do my calculation. So, in general the if the cost and the benefit are given. So, here cost is given with the concept of C and the benefits are given with the, um, the concept of R. So, it is basically revenue, revenue. So, if that is to be used then obviously C would have a negative value and R would basically have a positive value. So, if I do it, so here you see I am using the value of minus. So, this is the overall outflow in the negative sense for the first time period or the 0 time period and this is the value of the inflow for the first time period or the 0 time period. Similarly, my, my inflow and outflow for time period 1. So, this is the inflow positive and this is the outflow which is positive negative. So, you should see the negative sign. Similarly, if I go to the last term, it will basically have a negative term which is minus C suffix T and divided by 1 plus R T comma C. So, these values which I have given interest rate are also different for inflow and outflow. I will give you a very simple example and close this class. So, this is the value of, of the outflow which is negative, this is the value of the inflow which is positive. Now, why this interest rate for the negative and positive are different? Say for example, you go to a bank and you deposit money and on the same day you also go to the bank and, and uh, take some loan. So, in that case the amount of interest rate for the deposits and the amount of interest which you pay for the, for the loan are totally different. So, which means that the inflow and outflow would definitely have a, a different interest rate based on the demand and supply. Or say for example, consider the foreign exchange, you go to the bank and deposit some euros or you go to the foreign exchange counter of SBA and withdraw some euros. So, in this both these cases you will see the in the interest rate or the rate of exchange of Indian rupees to euros or Europe, euros to Indian rupees for those two instances would be different because in demand and supply are different. Hence, the interest rate for the inflows and outflows we are considering as different. 
So, thank you very much with this I will end the 25th class and continue with the concept of the net present value and other concepts in the subsequent classes. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.